Okay, now if we went to China and we said, we'd like you to do better about shark finning, they'd say, tell that to the hundreds of metric tons of shark fins you asked us to send you last year. You probably know that shark fin soup is a popular dish served in China and involves the cruel practice of cutting off a shark's fins, usually while it's still alive, and throwing the body back in the water where it either bleeds to death or drowns. But what you probably didn't know is that shark fin soup is not just being consumed in faraway places. It's proudly served right here in the U.S. Sometimes it's actually an off-menu item. You have to ask for it specifically or know that it's there in order to buy it because a lot of restaurants don't want to publicize that they're selling shark fin soup in the United States. Do you have shark fin soup any chance? Selfie soup? Yeah. Do you yeah. have? Yeah, we have. Okay. We're actually still selling shark fins in the States, primarily for um, a soup dish, which is not nutritious in any way. Um, it's kind of like eating a cow for its kneecaps just the kneecaps. In the U.S., shark finning is actually illegal, which means fishermen are not allowed to remove a shark's fin while at sea. However, they are allowed to remove the fin, but only once the shark has been brought to land and accounted for. But the fins used to make shark fin soup in the U.S. are not coming from local waters. We're buying them from other countries. And most of them are coming from countries with no shark finning regulations, meaning they can cut the fins off of live sharks and dump them back into the water without any repercussions. That's why the Shark Fin Sales Elimination Act was introduced to Congress in 2017. If passed, it would essentially make it illegal to possess, sell, or purchase shark fins. Part of the reason that this bill was introduced is that 11 states in the United States and three territories had already passed similar bans. And so this would take what these other states did by banning the buying and selling of shark fins and make it um, a national law. But with every bill comes opposition. There's, there's something in this whole notion that, I mean, that shark fin soup is bad. Meet Sean Gehan. He's a lobbyist against the bill, representing commercial shark fishermen. Finning is bad if it leads to unsustainable rates of harvest. I mean, it's wasteful to not use every bit that could provide some value. So we bring it to the dock, we sell the meat, and what do you want us to do? Throw the shark fin in a garbage can or into a fire pit? That's insane. And I will tell anybody that it's insane. This is Rusty Hudson. He used to buy and sell shark fins for a living and is worried that this bill will lead to wasteful practices. Let's put it like this. If you were going to be a person that raised pigs and then you want to sell your hams and your pork chops, what are you going to do with the pig's feet? Throw them away? I mean, that's what you're asking them to do. You're asking them to throw away part of their profit. We've always been told not to waste a resource. And then someone tells you, well, you know, do what you're doing, but throw those parts away because we don't like that. And this is Greg D. Domenico executive director of the Garden State Seafood Association. Something's being lost in the understanding of the people not only opposing the bill, um, but also the, the public. And that is, we don't fin sharks. We catch the whole animal, we use it all, fins and all. But the bill wasn't designed to be wasteful or to attack fishermen. Rather, it's to eliminate the incentive for sharks to be targeted in the first place since the most valuable part of a shark is its fins. Shark meat doesn't fetch enough money. It's the shark fins that are the prize. And if we no longer create a market for shark fins, then they're, they're not going to be targeted in the first place because it's not financially feasible to target them for their body. But there's still a concern that when you make a product illegal, you run the risk of creating a black market for that product. Experts have come out very heavily against this type of prohibitions because they take away from the actual uh, conservation of sharks. They believe that it will only really promote more of a black market in other places. That's only true if the demand for shark fins is steady or increasing. And it's been shown that the demand in shark fins is decreasing anyways. Between 2011 and 2014, Wild Aid reported that 85% of Chinese consumers stopped eating shark fin soup and that shark fin sales in China had declined by as much as 82%. You know, even the Chinese government have said, 
you are not allowed to have shark fin soup if you are a government employee and it's on the government dime. And in the U.S., a 2016 national poll found that 8 out of 10 registered voters support a national ban on shark fins, including major companies who have also joined the global movement against the shark fin trade. But despite bipartisan support for this bill, the U.S. continues to import and export shark fins on a daily basis. By allowing the trade of shark fins within our borders, the United States continues to contribute to this global problem. Though maybe we shouldn't be so worried about buying shark fins from countries with no shark finning bans in place, since lobbyists argue that we know exactly where these shark fins are coming from. We know where fins come from, at least from where they're processed, where they're imported from. You mentioned the countries that we import from. Where are these places? I'll tell you. She's going to sleep. Shoot, I have... I don't know. Or maybe not. Shark fins collected legally within the U.S., however, have provided some income for commercial fishermen, though it's not much when compared to the value of commercial fishing in its entirety. The biggest shark fishery in the U.S., it's less than a half of a percent of the entire U.S. commercial fish fishery. It's not a big economic driver by any means. The total value of shark landings in Florida for 2015 was $900,000. A new report has found that the amount of money that shark diving generates in Florida alone is $120 million. I will, however, caution using this um, the economic value of sharks worth more alive and dead is the primary reason to conserve them. Because if that's what we're relying on for conservation, what happens if all of a sudden they start being worth more dead than alive? So I think wildlife can be conserved because they deserve conservation, not just because what their economic value is. Perhaps this is where the problem lies in this debate. Our conservation rhetoric has always relied on how humans can benefit from sharks, and not how sharks can benefit from us. We see this on one side, where we have environmental organizations who are ultimately concerned about the well-being of sharks, because it puts our seafood at risk. We need to continue to protect sharks to balance the ocean so we can continue to enjoy seafood for generations um, to come. And on the other side, lobbyists who are concerned about sharks because it puts our American jobs at risk. To do anything else to American fishermen, and really to their families, because that's what this is about, to take money off their table, to take bread off their table, is for this, is just unforgivable. But what about the sharks? It's not hard to imagine that they don't want to be tortured, suffocated, mistreated, hacked, abused, dismembered, hanged, or beaten just so we can enjoy a bowl of soup. Maybe these are the only reasons why we should protect sharks. I, I, I just can't change people's uh, thoughts. The most that I can say is, here's reality. If you can't accept reality, then close your eyes. But for the rest of us, with our eyes open, we see an ocean that needs protecting because the true reality is that we can do better.